Hey everybody, this is Landon again for Enso Koi. Just wanted to show a gameplay video of Enso Koi. And uh, right off the bat, I am showing my friend Mike the cheat card that shows the initial board setup as well as a quick guide for all the Koi pieces. Over on the left hand side of the cheat card are all the straight line moving Koi and on the right side are all the multi-direction, which also happen to be lotus flowers, which are used for reviving later in the game. So we will begin with Mike taking his first turn and moving a stone into the center of the board and then we will alternate placing down a stone until each one of us has placed down all five of our stones. During this initial phase, stones can only be placed in this neutral zone or the center of the board. You cannot place stones down where the fish currently are, but once the game actually begins you can start moving stones anywhere you want. So this initial setup is actually just to kind of set up the beginning flow, the overall shape of the board, the direction you may want to start strategizing around. Um, every game begins quite differently based on how you approach this. And so Mike will place down his last stone and I will go ahead and place my last stone as well. And Mike will begin moving his koi, but he needs to make sure that as he moves his koi, that he actually has to flip the koi upside down to represent that it has finished moving as seen right here. And notice it has a lotus flower right there. Only exposed lotus flowers can actually let you revive a lost piece. So he goes ahead and moves the second piece, flips it over, and begins thinking about which pieces can move which direction. So he moves the tancho, which is a straight line, and flips it. And typically for your first match, you're going to be kind of getting a feel for each of the pieces, so he's referring to the card here. He goes ahead and moves his Beko piece. And so what's important for every first turn is that these four spaces in every corner where you have an Asagi and a Showa starting off, you need to move your fish out of that space, otherwise they will die at the end of your turn. These four spaces are kind of like elevated stonework inside of a koi pond, and so a fish can move through it safely, but if it happens to stop in those spaces at the end of the turn, then unfortunately the koi will die at the end of the turn. And so Mike will continue moving the remaining pieces that he wishes to move since each turn you don't have to move every single one of your pieces. You can choose up to how many you wish to move. If you choose not to move any then that counts as a pass and you can only do those twice before it's considered a forfeit. And so he'll pass his turn off to me and I will go ahead and start moving my pieces. Uh, I've done this a couple times so I know which ones go where and where I should start moving. And so I begin developing a symmetrical or semi-symmetrical approach. Um, and I go ahead and take these stones with the Utsuri Koi because he can capture stones. That way at the end of my turn, I can actually use them. I'll go ahead and develop these over here. And then I'll make sure that I move my pieces that are in the corner outside so they don't die at the end of the turn. And I have stones in my possession, so I will go ahead and place one down on the board. Even if I have multiple ones, I can only place down one, but if I do happen to have any stones in possession, I have to place one down. And so I put it there, just kind of block off and prevent him from capturing my uh, Tancho there. And so at the beginning of his turn, unflip all the currently flipped Koi pieces. And then he can begin his turn. And so now he takes a look at the board position and comes up with a strategy. He goes ahead and takes the stone over here. So feeling threatened, he moves the Asagi back. And he sees a little opening to grab a few more stones. Clears up this side of the board a little bit, puts his guy at risk, but in exchange he gets a couple stones that he can use for defensive uses later. Develops the Showa. And the Showa is a four space multi directional piece. It's probably the strongest piece in the game as far as reach goes. There's only one of them, so you kind of want to protect him as much as possible, but use it as a good means of uh, threatening the opponent's pieces. So because the stones are in the center here, 
um, he's able to kind of approach as long as a Beko is not nearby. And Beckos can actually go through stones. And so he'll place down one of his stones behind. This way it kind of defends from a straight on angle. I go ahead and unflip my pieces. So over here I see an opportunity to grab a Tancho in Utsidi. And I'll go ahead and grab this stone over here. And I go ahead and see a little move over here where I can actually hop the stone and the koi with my Utsuri, capturing both pieces. And I can actually revive a piece since I captured a lotus there. And so I would revive a piece at that point, but he hasn't captured any yet, so I just keep moving. Go ahead and set some pieces up to defend and just re-establish a more of a central position on the board. I develop my piece out a little bit wide so it can come from a different angle if need be and get around the stone over here. And at the end of my turn, I go ahead and place down a stone right behind my piece so he doesn't just jump it quickly. And goes ahead and unflips his pieces. So he's going to see this opportunity over here to capture a lotus flower with this Asagi. And notice he has to stop moving after he's made a capture. Even if it had multiple moves afterwards, he has to stop after making a capture. It cannot continue forward. So he will go ahead and revive a piece in that spot. And so he chooses the Utsuri so that he can capture over the stone and the Koi piece, which is something only this piece can do. And every time you revive a piece, you have to count down on your counter. Only six revives are allowed per player in a game. So he moves the Beko over here, catches the piece. So he extends the Showa and catches an additional piece over here, but that does expose the Showa's flower. Catches one more over here. And goes ahead and finds a place for his stone. Now bear in mind that this is a gameplay video of a one versus one matchup, but Ensokoi does support up to six players either in free-for-all or team matches, and that can be two, three teams. Later on, I can definitely record a team matchup gameplay video. All right, and I begin my turn by unflipping my pieces. So I redirect my angle since it's a multi-directional piece and I go ahead and capture in a way where I can kind of reposition in a good way I like. So if you notice right here, there's actually a straight line of both a stone and koi fish. Uh, the Utsuri there can actually capture that. I missed that point and he will actually use that to his advantage later. In the meantime, I catch the show as a uh, lotus flower and I revive a piece, which can then immediately move and capture another lotus piece. And so I choose to bring back the Kamon Ryu, who then, since uh, I can't have him go and capture a piece, I'll just go ahead and push him forward to develop a different angle. I capture this one over here. And since I have two at risk from his piece uh, from capture, I go ahead and place down the stone behind them so that they are protected from a jump. And he begins his turn. 
Now he captures this one piece, but because I had set things up, he doesn't capture the uh, lotus flower, which is a more optimal move for me. He does, however, see my blunder over here and catches uh, three koi and a stone. And when you make captures, uh, go ahead and make sure that the pieces are all laid out like this so that your opponent can actually see what options they have for revival are. So he goes ahead and develops over here to his right, and he will be uh, jumping this lotus flower over here, and he's deciding out of the available pieces which one would be most advantageous for him. He goes with the Kimon Ryu, which is a four space straight line, really, really far reach and great for setting up um, traps. And he goes ahead and uh, updates his counter. So stone strategy can be pretty complicated sometimes. Uh, you can either take a more defensive approach to it or sometimes a offensive approach. He places a stone here to limit the options for the Asagi there, which is a three space straight line moving piece. I go ahead and take this opportunity to take three stones. And I'll go ahead and redirect my position to capture these guys, which one of them is a lotus flower. So I will be choosing a piece that I feel can uh, do the most damage over here. I go ahead and grab a Kimon Ryu. And I take this opportunity to capture the piece over here. And since I have reach within this lotus flower, I also happen to grab my uh, backhoe over here. And let it move and capture this piece here. So now I've kind of wiped out this whole my right side or the, the bottom side as we see here. And redevelop the position of the rest of my pieces and go ahead and place a stone down right over here to limit his mobility. And since he has three pieces left on the board, I'm allowed to move one stone that's currently on the board to a completely different position. So I go ahead and trap him over there. And then that concludes my turn and he goes ahead and unflips his koi. So at the end of anyone's turn, if there are three koi fish on a team, uh, you get to relocate any stone from the board to another location that includes both the player with only three pieces as well as his opponent So both players So he goes ahead and moves his Kimon Ryu over here And goes ahead and moves his Tancho forward So he notices he can move his Kimon Ryu over here and capture my Lotus Flower, which will revive a piece. And since he wants to make sure he chooses a piece that is safe from a revival, he goes with the Beko. And he goes ahead and grabs this piece. My closest Koi cannot reach, so he is safe in this position. Hopefully this will uh, give him some extra opportunities on the board. And because he revived a piece, now he has four on his team. So at the end of his turn, he can only place down a stone, but he cannot relocate an existing stone. So he goes ahead and places the stone over here. And my turn begins. So I take a look at the board and I know I want to take out that uh, bottom right piece so that I can have an entire chunk of the board to myself. So it's my Showa that takes the piece over here. And I go ahead and take this opportunity to 
re-establish my position on this side of the board. Make sure all the pieces can actually defend each other pretty properly. And because I did capture one of his pieces this turn, now he has three on his team. And after I place down my own stone, I get to relocate an existing stone on the board to another location. So I wind up deciding to grab this piece over here and I'm trying to determine if I want to block him or kind of set myself up for success. So I go ahead and place the stone over here to reinforce the side. And once again, he goes ahead and unflips his pieces. So when a player has only three pieces left, this is essentially the end game. And so it's up to them to figure out how to get themselves out of that position. While for me, it's my task to try and overtake him and get those last remaining two. So it leaves one more left to win the game. So he places down the stone over here to try and limit my Showa. And because he has three remaining pieces, he can relocate this stone here. And goes ahead and tries to make sure that the Kimono Ryu doesn't work his way around. But unfortunately, I already see how I'm going to finish this. So I go ahead and hop the stone over here to make room for my Kimon Ryu, which is a four piece or four space straight line. Take the Lotus and I'll be able to revive a piece here. And so I go with the Beko. That way I can go ahead and just easily capture the last remaining piece. And that'll wrap up the game. So I hope this gameplay video helped you guys uh, and see a little bit of how the game works and even though it is very easy to pick up it has a lot of potential for deep strategy i hope that you guys have enjoyed this and i hope